usually I'm quite pessimistic about these things. I think these toys are going to cling on for quite a while. They're not clinging on to office, they're not in power because there's nothing happening within Parliament itself. But I, I just was on the thought actually that, you know, on a pessimistic day, they're going to struggle on for the next two, three years and it's going to be a nightmare, austerity will roll out, etc. But today I'm optimistic because you look at them, they're tearing themselves apart, and the one thing that is encouraging me to that there might be a general election, is that they hate each other more than they hate us. There's a real people atmosphere in Parliament, so anything can happen. So we're preparing for government, and we have been since the last general election, and we're preparing in detail. And the reason we're preparing is because, God, we need a Labour government. Yeah. <laughs> We had the spring statement last week. Hammond um, spoke in Parliament to introduce the Office of Budget Responsibility Report, uh, which he set out some basic statistics on the economy and basically argued that the fundamentals of our economy and society were, well, the fundamentals were right. The fundamentals were solid and sound and provided us with a basis for the future. And we just took him apart. And if you look at that debate, Labour MP after Labour MP just took him apart, not just on the statistics, it wasn't just that, but you know, where he talks about the economy in terms of growth, growth has been downgraded every year for three years as a result of the mismanagement of the economy. It isn't just about Brexit, it's happened before Brexit. Investment, public investment at its lowest level, business investment stagnating for the last last year. And you see a balance of payments, the old current account deficit now of 13 billion in the last quarter. So on every statistic, every statistic that he threw at us, we were able to rebut. And then he comes forward with this, what he called a remarkable story about jobs. The, the highest, the lowest level of employment, the highest levels of employment. And then you just peel behind those statistics. You know, you're classified as employed in this country if you work more than one hour. So there's two and a half million people out there working less than 15 hours a week. We have now a culture, an economic culture, of low pay, because wages are still below the 2007-2008. So we have a culture of low pay, long hours, low productivity, and the worst of all is that insecurity of work, the exploitation of the zero hours contract, the exploitation of the bullying management that we've seen right the way across industry itself and the service sector in particular. That's the nature of their economy that they've constructed. And Laura will go into government as our Minister for the new Department of Employment and will tear that apart. She'll tell you about it. We're going to introduce, yeah, it is the Institute of Employment Rights Manifesto that we adopted and we've been campaigning for, Jeremy and myself, for over 20 years and some people longer. We'll set up a Department of Employment. It will be responsible for restoring sexual collective bargaining, restoring trade union rights from the first 100 days of a Labour government, scrapping the anti-trade union legislation. <laughs> interesting the OPR report last week. Can you remember when George Osborne boasted by now we would be reaching nine pounds an hour? Well it was admitted in the OPR report that they failed that target and actually it would be seven nearly seven hundred quid a year less than they actually predicted at that stage. And then we went into a discussion about what sort of world do these toys live in? Because it's not the same as the rest of us. Yeah. It's not the same as what's happening in my community. And we just produced some of the real economic statistics. Four and a half million children in this country living in poverty. Two thirds of them living in households where someone's at work. We have, for the first time in generations, a rise in infant mortality. Nowhere else in, nowhere else in Europe but in this country as a result of austerity. And we have one million pensioners living in severe poverty. And you know it takes something, doesn't it, when you have a UN rapporteur come to this country and report on levels of destitution inflicted on people as a result of this government's policies. But also, the other UN rapporteur, that never really got an awful lot of coverage, that actually described the systematic abuse of the human rights of disabled people under this government. That's the sort of government that we're... They're the real economic statistics, and the real economic statistics tonight of 5,000 people out there, our fellow citizens, but that's what they are, sleeping on our streets. 
two and a half thousand died over the last five years as a result of that. They're the real economic statistics that we have to confront. And that's they're the real economic statistics that demand the election of a Labour government as rapidly as we possibly can. And we're preparing for government. The others will tell you about it. We've taken every policy from the last manifesto. We're updating it, seeing what additional policies we need. We're preparing implementation manuals, drafting up the legislation. I'm doing the costings, finding the revenues. They're spending like mad. <laughs> <laughs> but actually, actually spending, that's absolutely essential if we're going to lay down the fabric of a civilised society. What the Tories have done is torn up the social fabric that actually Labour governments consistently constructed over generations. So we're preparing for government, ready for government. And it's straightforward, our message is very straightforward. Fifth richest country in the world. We can afford the public services that we need if we have a fair taxation system. And the fair taxation system, let's keep repeating it to people, it will be, yes, a rise in income tax on the top 5%. Because they're the ones who actually, over the last year, has income, their income has increased, while the bottom 20% has actually had their income decrease. It will mean, yes, that we're basically reversing some of the corporation taxes that have been cut. Not all, because we'll still be one of the lowest corporation taxes in Europe and competitive. We'll introduce what many of us have campaigned for, a Tobin tax, a financial transaction tax on the City of London. We'll reverse a number of those taxes to that have benefited the rich, like the inheritance tax cuts that have taken place under the Tories. And yes, we'll introduce the detailed tax of enforcement and transparency programme prepared by Prem Seeker and the Tax Justice Campaign. Yeah. So what will that do? It will tackle tax evasion and tax avoidance. And I do this joke time and time again, you must be bored with it, but I'll do it again. They said during the last election that I had a magic money trick. There is one, it's in the Cayman Islands, we're going to dig it up. <laughs> We'll be able to afford the, the National Education Service that Angie Rayner is going to construct. I've told Angie she's going to be the Nye Bevan of the next Labour government. <laughs> just, just as we built the NHS under Act, we will build the National Education Service under Corbyn. And it will be education free at the point of need from cradle to grave, free childcare, primary school and secondary school. <laughs> youngster under a Labour government in the future will do everything asked of them, pass the rate levels, go to university and come out burdened with £57,000 worth of debt. We'll scrap tuition fees and we'll do it in our first period of office and it will lift that burden off youngsters. So we'll have free education. You will use that taxation system to ensure that we fund the NHS properly but time after time we meet, we meet health workers, they turn up at meetings like this and all of them to a person saying no point in putting the money in the front door if it goes out the back door to privateers. So not only we fund the NHS, we'll end the privatisation. We'll bring it to the And yes, we'll tackle the housing crisis. We'll build a million new homes. Half of them will be proud to call council homes. And we'll make sure that everybody has that dream, will fulfil their dream of having a decent roof over their heads for their families. Because homelessness, homelessness is a scandal. It is a scandal and it's an abuse of people's human rights. And in a, as we've said, on one of the richest countries in the world, we shouldn't stand by and allow people to be sleeping on our streets or in overcrowded conditions or in substandard housing. We thought we'd got rid of that in the 60s and the 50s and even in the 40s. And these Tories have brought it back. And they've brought it back how? Because they want to make profits out of people's basic needs. We'll end that. Finally. We want to ensure, we want to ensure that as we manage the economy, it's managed democratically. And that means you can only manage something democratically if you have a strong element of ownership as well. So that's why we said, yes, we'll double the cooperative sector in this economy. And to be honest, that's a relatively timid, um, a timid objective, but we'll, we'll look at that and see if we can extend it even further. We're going to introduce this inclusive share ownership scheme, whereby companies at 1% a year handed over for 10 years, 
to the workers collectively owned, so they'll have representatives on the board and they'll take the decisions with regard to the investment within that company itself. But we can't stand by and allow basic public utilities from the past being used to rip us off and exploit us in the job. That's why we're bringing water and energy and rail and Royal Mail. <laughs> campaigned on in the last general election, we're now adding to and advancing and drilling down into the detail for its implementation. So whenever that election is called, we'll be ready. We'll be ready with the detailed proposals and programme determined by our movement, because we're now a movement of over half a million members. We're not just a political party, we're a social movement that extends right the way across the country. And I said, I said to the POA this afternoon, look, the difference from here on in now with this scale of a movement, now with a social movement, not just a political party, the difference is that it will no longer be a system whereby you elect a group of Labour MPs, no matter how good and committed they are, no matter how much we have faith in them, it will no longer be a system where you just elect them and off they go and we, they're meant to deliver it for us. That will never work again. When we go into government, we all go into government. And we go in as a movement, we develop the ideas in government, we campaign to develop those ideas and protect that government, and we're involved in the administration of those particular policies. So it will no longer be like the old-fashioned management of, it won't be like the old-fashioned nationalisation where you simply change the management and put bureaucrats in, it'll be workers managing their industries. <laughs> companies that are in private hands, that will be decisions made in private hands. We'll have workers representative on every board and they'll be a third of that board but they'll all be owners of those companies as well. In that way we will democratise our whole economy. Now I'll finish on this. I was part of that movement in the 80s when we took over the GLC and the theory was in and against the state and the theory was this, that the state is a set of institutions, of course it is, but it's also a relationship. It's largely a relationship of dominance. So in other words, working class people come towards the state and they're told what they'll have or how it will operate. No longer will that be the case. We went inside the state to transform that relationship. And we'll transform that relationship to ensure that, I repeat, we've heard this before, the society we create, radically fairer, radically more equal, radically more democratic, based upon, yes, uh, an economy that is economically but environmentally sustainable because our ingredient such for a revolution that will develop under Labour, but where that economy is prosperous, <coughs> but where that prosperity is shared by everybody. What is it? Socialism. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. sooner or later it doesn't matter we've got to be good we all have to recognize now we have a responsibility on all of our individual shoulders we can't miss this opportunity you know five or six years ago i say this i, I was looking forward to a quiet run into retirement <laughs> sitting at the back of walls moaning that no one ever listened to me and all <laughs> this is an opportunity of our lifetime for all of us so the responsibility we have on our shoulders now is build the movement recruit to the party, build for the campaigns, be there when we march, be there on picket lines, be there on that doorstep when we're trying to elicit those votes from people because this is a gift of a lifetime to have a socialist going into number 10 to transform the world is before us and within our grasp. So